Wait, so when you say you left the country, what does that look like? Do you hop on a plane? <laughs> Get down! Yalla, yalla, yalla! They portnoy you are an asshole, brother. Whoa, 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 whoa. Gang, gang. Ice cream, so good. Wow, you fell my heart. <laughs> I laughed so hard I actually got dizzy. Because you guys are drunk! Do it! You do it! Our friend melted in his seat. Show the world your new tattoo. All joke aside, I will never like or accept that. Good job. <laughs> One thing about it, you have to enjoy anything you do. If you don't enjoy, it's going to be a failure. When you are young, you could conquer. You could do anything you want. If you work hard, you'll be very successful. Yeah, that was such a beautiful monologue, and then you ended it like bow rap. Great success. To chai. To chai. Tea. Lattes. Does dad look like a very successful adult actor with his family. Mm. Does he not? <laughs> it's either you sell drugs or you do pornos, but it's, it's it, He does it, both. He looks like he does both. <laughs> Are you guys comfortable? Very. Okay, you're not even talking. See, we literally rehearsed this. You guys have to share microphones. Hello. Your, your eyelashes look fantastic, Caroline. So do you want me to do this? Or this. Mom, stop hitting on my friend. That was <laughs> hey, That is disgusting. I won't even like that as a joke. Okay, we'll cut it out for you. Bleep, bleep, bleep. bleep. No, no, no. You don't bleep. Just that's bleep. not, that's no, not I know, cutting. I know, I know. We put the bleeps afterwards. <laughs> so before we get into this, my father has been, he's opening up a cigar lounge. And, yes. And so him and my sister have been taking bartending classes. I would like to read to you the drinks that they're practicing in this Christian home. <laughs> Okay, this is this mom. This is what your husband is making behind your back. First of all, pink. Oh, that's that's George. George. That's the, Hand her the mic. Better. Hand her the mic. You, you better. I, and I mean it. If anybody that I know hears that stupid word coming out of your mouth in my presence, I'm gonna throw fits. Mom, I'm not saying this. This no, is what I people order. I don't give order. a damn what's on that. So paper. can I ask you something? We're closing the bar. No, listen. If if somebody <laughs> comes up to your husband at the bar and he's like, "Hi, excuse me," you know, don't my say it. I know what you about. Yeah, no. This is your house, Caroline. You can't hit him. Could you hold the mic, Dad? Hold the mic. We are Reed, not you serving mic? that drink. I'm, wait, what were we doing with no, mics? Dad, holding... give Mom the mic, yeah. and then when you need to talk, grab the mic. So you're actually going to have those names at your establishment? Literally, people going to ask for that filthy drink? Yes. Sex in the Beach. Where, where do you find Pink. your inspiration, Dad? What, what inspired these names? No, he didn't create these names. Oh, you didn't come up with these names. You thought no, my no. dad created I these thought, names? Yeah, I thought, no. I thought you were you thought like, my father. <laughs> this is, you, know what, I, no. so, you know it's not your fault. It's not his fault. Look at the picture. <laughs> <laughs> that looks like a man who created the drinks. I pictured you with like a whiteboard just like pink. <laughs> uh, okay, guys. So first of all, thank you. That, that six minutes was pretty out there. We're probably going to slim it down. Make it like three. Yeah, don't tell them how many minutes it was because they're going to look and be like, it's only been two. two what minutes. does he mean six? Two, why do we have to cut all what? that out? <laughs> My mom minutes. got upset, guys. I'm sorry. Um, last time you guys were here, you guys were a huge hit, man. A huge hit. People loved you guys. I'm very proud of you. Round Let's of applause go. for Let's these guys. Let's go. That was one of the top performing episodes, mom and dad. Thanks. You Thank guys you are guys. celebrities. And, and you know what? Today we're going to treat this kind of like you guys are our respectful guests. And we want to dive a little bit into your guys' mindset and time. Unless it gets boring and then we're going to move on. Um, <laughs> but you guys are from Iraq. Correct. Yes. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> Right over there. On. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> um, Nailed it. Nailed it. What was it? What was it? For, before we let, let's dive even farther back. You guys grew up in the same neighborhood. You guys were next door neighbors. God help me. We were a street apart. And like so a cute story. Okay. When I was two years old and my parents were building a house in that neighborhood, it was a new development. So there's new development in Iraq. You know, Iraq is a very <laughs> rich country. Excuse you, very rich country. It's a culture on this guy. <laughs> <laughs> no idea. He knows to be nothing honest, about his so I swear to God, until I was like 20, I did not know that. I yeah. really did. until somebody was like, "Yeah, you know, somebody had a driver," and I go, "Who had a driver?" <laughs> I little my racist ass thought everybody was on camels. I, I I'm not <laughs> kidding. And I'm uh, not trying to say that to make any jokes. I truly was like, thank God we left that country, bro. Cause, <laughs> cause, <laughs> what do you mean you, we? We. <laughs> <laughs> I left with my dad's nutsack. I was just sitting there. Just <laughs> <laughs> so, 
<laughs> you're off mic duty. Let's let's come back. Yeah, you don't even need the mic. You're so quiet over there. Just wave if you need. <laughs> just drunk. <laughs> my dad got him drunk <laughs> before the show. Just, Literally give me another five double drink. My dad's so like just no, practicing on people by the show. Time, time out, time out. I hear them outside. They're like, "Oh, you want a cigar? Yeah, let's smoke a cigar." Do you want a drink? What drinks go so good with cigars? He's like, oh, no, I'm sober now for the end of the year. And, and then he's like, oh, well, I have a really good, I forget any names. So he's like, okay, yeah, I'll take that. And then, and then he's like, and then, and then George goes, well, I don't know if I have that. And he's like, honestly, anything. I'll take anything. <laughs> Are you joking? <laughs> no, he, he has what's called Virginia Black. It's Drake's liquor in it. You know, it's like if you're going to drink, if you're going to break your sobriety, you're going to break it for this. You love Drake. Drake's Just turn on the AC, please. Was he like I'm Indian. Just, we love on the Drake. wagon? And crank it. No, 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 not like that. Oh, not like I that. see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You make your thing like you had a bad problem. I thought you were... No, it's my first time to your house. If I'm oh, going to break my sobriety, I'm oh, going to break it with George's yeah, head. It's I like, see, I see. It's yeah, a respectful yeah, thing like to do. That. Bro, you're, first of all, <laughs> dad, dad, button the bottom of your shirt, your belly button's poking out. <laughs> dude, dude, bro, you're not looking great. <laughs> this <mic. laughs> You're a <laughs> You're a Oh. Get it, my friends <laughs> that are sober. I like that. Uh, <laughs> and then you're both <laughs> And it's so hot in here. It's really hot. It's it's so really hot. hot. I know. Because you guys it are is. drunk. Come oh, on. Yeah, yeah, we can see. We can... <laughs> I'm not drunk. I'm sober. Well, except for you. Uh, I can uh, just see sh- the um, comments on this episode. I can't wait to read them. Well, we're three minutes in because we've cut so much. But <laughs> okay, listen, listen. Let's just wind it back. Let's start fresh, okay? We got it out of our system. What the fuck are you doing? I'm, oh, you're on me. I'm literally in the middle of something. She just puts it my No, we want to go back to when you guys were kids because when you guys were in Iraq, you know, and your families were already friends, but you guys also left around the same time, and so you guys have always been close all your lives, whether you were in Iraq, whether you were in the United States, you guys have always kind of stayed in close quarters. So, honestly, I did not know him well when we were in Iraq because the age gap. So he was a friend of my first cousin Mm because they were the same age. I was the friend of his cousins. They were my age. So him and I didn't even, I mean, honestly, I would see him walking down the street, we wouldn't even say hi to each other. Yeah. Because I, like I said, I know his cousins. We got closer, like, as friends in Chicago because when they moved here, we moved here, we barely knew anyone. So when my mom would have Thanksgiving and things like that, she would have them over and we would go over and, and that's how it, it and a Christmas. So it became closer here because how, we, neither one of us had family How here. old were you guys when you moved to the States? I left the country, I was about nine. So, but, you know, so I came in that's, this country wow. between 10 and, a half, 10 and a half, 11. Can I ask you guys something? I think, yeah. Just said, mm-mm. Yeah, I was but that's what I'm saying. I left Iraq around nine. I left there for, I stay there There's for a year, There's always complications. Year and a half. Guys, I promise you, it's okay. <laughs> no, but I'm saying we lived in Lebanon for a year and, and a half. And if you need the mic, just grab it from yeah, Maria Orbel. 100%. Give me my mic. Wait, so when you say you left the country, what, what? does that look like? Like, do you hop on a plane? Like, <laughs> get down! <laughs> you got like, you got like, <laughs> like are, you, are you jumping out a boat? Like, what's going on? I, no, no, no. Just, no. But that's what I'm trying to tell you guys. Is it the Carnival Cruise? It was like, a very <laughs> modern. Uh, I mean, Baghdad was a beautiful country. Uh, just because it was the Middle East, we weren't backward. It was we had our own. Uh, Baghdad has an own, its own class. So yes, we did get on a plane because my camel wasn't working. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> All right. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. We're throwing but a lot I'm of jokes tell out. You, wait, 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 hold on. I, I just want to really get sincere with this exact moment. Are you guys not scared of leaving your country and going to the white man land? Well, we were children. Were you so excited or like? Were, they had to have had told no, you, like, "Hey, we're packing your you, bags. We're leaving." You were nine or ten, so you understood what was ha- was happening. You weren't like six years old. You. We knew you, what was. Ha- we're traveling to a different country. What did your parents tell you when you were coming over? That we were going to go to America. What did that mean to you? that I was going to leave my best friend behind and Mm -hmm. I I probably would not see my cousins and my uncles and none of that anymore. Did you ever reunite with them or no? Oh, thank God, yes. Major, uh, 99% of my family is out of there. Thank God. They're all in Australia, London, America, yes. Do you ever care to come visit? I would love to take my children to see where I was born or where he was born, our neighborhood, 
But unfortunately, I don't think that will ever happen. Now, northern Iraq, it's beautiful, it's safe, but I have no, I've visited and on vacation there, but it's, I have no attachment. I feel like Chicago is what you guys are attached that's to. My, that's what I feel my home is, but my roots are always going to be in Baghdad because I'm a Syrian. Could you pass the mic to dad? I want to ask him a question. How you doing? Good. You feel How comfortable? You? Yes. And Matt, you got smacked, huh? Are you a little drunk? <laughs> no. You swear? That's right. Okay, because you haven't talked, but you smiled the no, whole time. She was saying everything right. <clears throat> okay, cool. Nice. She said everything right. I only step in <laughs> I hate when, she when my woman things. is wrong. If oh. she's wrong, I step in. Uh, what did it feel like to you leaving your country? Were you scared? Or were you excited because the girl that you loved was like leaving as well? No, that time we don't. We what never love each loved? other. What, what girl you loved? Before? I thought Little you loved... No, we that was in Chicago, oh, story, you, not in Baghdad. In Chicago, follow the timeline of your parents. You? Wait, the water borrowing was in in Baghdad. Okay, I was three. What girl you loved? I don't know how you guys he did it back then. He was nine. Take it easy, Carlos. No, no, hold on. <laughs> Let's get this thing straight. If anybody's out there, that's a therapist. <laughs> uh, which part didn't you get? This is why I'm a comedian. But I couldn't really, get anything which part wrong. Did you get? Do you have any idea what messing up English, failing English? And then coming home, getting yelled at in broken English. <laughs> Who has a broken English? Who? Who's blocking English? I have a broken English. <laughs> I speak English take a, way better than you. Take one look to your right. I don't care. I'm talking about myself. <laughs> yeah. Right. When you send him to discipline me, he's like, hey, what the shit your mama tell you about it? <laughs> <laughs> what is this you felt English? Never, I never talk like this. <laughs> <laughs> I never talk but, like but this. You know what? <laughs> All joke aside, I think him leaving Baghdad, it was harder because he was younger he was like 16 and they need to get him out before he was drafted to army mm. so now you can tell your story if you're sober enough to speak coward <laughs> <laughs> should have fought no. for your country man. no when we left uh, baghdad we went to beirut we stay in the beirut both of you or just you no i am and they, later on a year later she come she you know traveled wait isn't it kind of oh. crazy that you guys were a year later. question no. were you guys near each other in your old country <clears throat> Street apart, yeah. Street apart. And then you go to Chicago. How far are you guys from each other? 20 minutes drive. 20 minutes drive. 20 minute drive. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. And then like, so where did this, where did it stem that you guys were like, okay, maybe we're meant to be together? Like where, where did this come from? So, let me bother with No, no. So here's the thing. Every <laughs> time there so was a much. wedding, like I've been a uh, maid, like a, between maid of honor and bridesmaid like 13, 14 times I've been asked. Let's and go. it was, wow. and it was like, they wouldn't even ask me. They would go to my parents like, we want her to be a maid of honor and stuff like mom I don't know them she goes well we know them and you're gonna do it and you know stuff like that no so, way. so every time him and I used to like wind up together first because we kind of knew the same people and then it got to the point when this one was asked to be uh, a best man or or an what do we call him usher no not yeah. usher a man uh, a, a groomsman yeah, yeah, groomsman and um he would, they would say, and you would stand with so-and-so, and he'll say, no, I'll bring my own. It's like, what? And he would come to me, he goes, oh, yeah, just make sure you're free that Saturday because we're in a wedding. I'm like, who's wedding? Aww. He goes, so-and-so. I'm like, I don't know them. He goes, well, you're going to stand with me. I'm not going to go with such and such, you know. Who did that? Your, Your father. Dad. That's so cute. So That's we so have cute. a lot of... So with that being He's said... He's like, come on, I knew you from Baghdad. So at the dance floor, I want you back that ass up on me instead of him. <laughs> I'm so so sorry. that being said, a lot of people thought we were dating <laughs> and we right weren't. Does I laughed so hard I actually yeah. got dizzy. <laughs> so they Earth thought so they thought we were dating and they would say, Oh, congrats, oh, very nice. Uh, we wish the day will come for you. And I'm like, No, <laughs> we're not dating. You know, and, and he would say, Oh, thank you. I'm like, Why are you thanking them? <laughs> you know, now all the cute guys are gonna think I'm dating you, you know? And uh, so, it's like, My plan is working. <laughs> yeah. So there was always something there yeah. until it developed. How do you feel about that? I feel okay. <laughs> He's no, like, okay. I got the girl. No, I yeah. no comment. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you ever wish that the war never happened and that you raised your kids in that country? I'm glad my kids, they grow up here. And believe me, um, it was a lot of problem over there. Start problem. Was there was there ever? Like, and I don't mean to be dark about this, but if we're bringing this up, was there was there somebody you like that you loved that you lost from like? No, things gone. No. Oh, okay, good. We didn't see bad days. We didn't. See we it. left there. Our parents sacrificed so much. Our parents had great lives, and they gave it up so their children can 
grow in a country that they can be free and follow their Christianity and be everything they wanted to be. Mm. So when when I was when we were moving from Chicago to Arizona, it took you it took your father at least two years to convince me to make the move from America, state to state. And the final thing that convinced me is when he sat me down, he goes, you don't even want to travel from one state to another. And look at our parents. They gave up their country, everything they mm-hmm. ever knew, and their family behind so that it could be better for us. And you don't want to sacrifice from Chicago to Arizona. And he was right. Um, if I had to ask you guys how you feel when you see people younger than you that are in this country and they've never really seen the outside world and what it could do when they speak bad about the country that we live in. If you had to give them an advice of like how to respect the country, like why, why would a young man that never really felt anything bad, how would you convince him to respect his country the same way that you guys respect your country. I mean, you guys left your country. There's a lot of bad things that happen in your country, but I've never heard you guys talk bad about your country never once. How do we get people that are immigrants, like the respect that they have? Like I see people that were born here that don't give a shit about this country. And then I see people that were like throwing in two t-shirts in a bag and they barely got to the soil and they kissed the ground that it's on. How do we get people that live here to show the same respect that you guys have when you guys are brand new to this country compared to them having generations? Are you talking about people that were born and raised here and don't yeah. respect mm-hmm. the country? Well, let's, let's broaden that to like people that, that just in general that live in a country that gives them the ability. Let's face it. You guys couldn't publicly stand in your street and say, F this country because of this, this, and that. Absolutely You had not. no right. They would take your life from you before you blinked. 100%. How do you go about trying to persuade somebody to show a little bit more respect for their country when you have the right to do that and make the change, but do it with some class and, and some respect for the soil that you're in? You know what I mean? Like, there's people that are not even standing for the, the Pledge of Allegiance. Before, I mean, till this day, I put my hand um, over my heart because... I, my parents weren't from this country, but there was people that died on these soils and other soils. So that way you guys can come to this country. 100%. And I get that because I hear the stories you guys talk mm-hmm. about. How do we get people to see that point of view without living that point of view? Is it possible? With some people, it's possible. With some other people, it won't be. Because you have to be an unusual human being to disrespect a flag, to disrespect your country, because this is a God's blessing. This is God's blessing, this ground that we live on. And unfortunately, so those people that they they cuss and they spit and they disrespect the flag is the people they haven't seen a rough day. And I'm not saying I have or he has. We haven't. But we also were raised to respect and know the the value of something. Um, We were taught that America is a land of opportunity. You can be anything you want to be. And it's true. You can be anything you want to be. I mean, you guys came here not fully loaded with anything. We didn't. We left everything. You had to leave Imagine building everything you're like, I can't even imagine. Like, for example, this podcast, I know this sounds stupid, but I'm bring this up. Imagine like I spent time with people that I love building, crying, sweating, bleeding. And then one day it's like, we got to go. We got to go. All that hard work. We got to go. And you guys came here, not defeated, but ready to work hard. Dad was telling me that he would work during the nights because, let's face it, your mom and dad couldn't run in this country. They could barely speak any English. So now you guys are in this country and you're kind of like having to raise your own parents. Does that make you have to grow up quicker? Or is that like, like... I didn't have that situation. His parents were older than mine. My parents were in their 30s, late 30s, early 40s when we came here. So my father worked I mean, my hard. Grandma and, and grandpa could not... They're not capable, which from my own eyes, they're not capable to go open up a business and do the tax code and do all. They didn't. But my dad did do that. He did. Oh, yes, he did. Okay. My father, 
My father worked, for, when he first got here, he opened, he didn't open a business, but he worked for, so my father came from where he had his own business, left it behind, and came here and worked very hard for someone else. And he waited until he got his brothers to the country, and then they did open a business, and they did, um, Body shop. you know, work hard and do whatever. But yeah, no, no, your grandfather, uh, he was the head of everything, he, he took care of, uh, he had a job, uh, he made sure we were in good schools, and he took care of us. We were, we were kids, we were young. We didn't, what, you, we didn't how about have, him? Well, in his oh. case, it was different. Well, as, when my parents, they were here, I tried to help them out as much as I could. I have about maybe three jobs. Wow. One, Where were they? One in, uh, I'm going to school, one of them. Second, I was at night, second shift, and weekends. And both of my parents, they were old. I tried to work hard and build up. And little bit by little bit, we bought, you know, like I bought a business. Again, I graduated from mechanical engineer. And uh, step by step. But excuse me, your father in the beginning, as, as old as he was, man, I mean, again, he wasn't in his, he was probably in his, 50. Early 60s, no, 60, yeah, yeah. 60. but he was working as a chef downtown. Oh, because yeah. your grandfather was a baker, yeah. he baked he, he worked things for a like year. nobody for a year. So, I don't know, a year or whatever, but yeah. he, he did get a job. A year. And, you know. He stopped working after that, you know. Um, he stopped working. What did it, what did it feel like? Because, how do I word this? Okay, when I'm in a jam, right. I'll give my industry as an example. A lot of people in my industry, once they make it, they're kind of like, nah, I know what the fuck's up. I don't need anybody's help. And they kind of move their parents aside. There were so many obstacles that I had to like figure out. And I, had, I only figured it out because me and you sat down and you were like, this is how you do your taxes. This is how you invest. This is how you save money for rainy days. These are, there are so many conversations that if I didn't have with my father, I would fail miserably. There's conversations that me and you have spiritually that I would have broken down before I even got to the business. How did you maneuver and did it hurt knowing that you couldn't have those conversations with your dad the same way that me and you do? Because I know when you talk to me sometimes, I know you're talking to me out of, in a way of like, I know what this feels like to not have this. So you, you're a lot more attentive than majority fathers that I know. My father was a very smart man, too. Mm -hmm. When I was in Baghdad, I was helping him out. He had a grocery store. He had his own business. He had his own business. Where? In Baghdad. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And... I get up in the morning around when, when I go to school, when I came back from school or lunchtime. Uh, sometimes they have fiesta on lunchtime. Like people, they sleep from 12 to 4. It was somewhere like Arizona, so hot, or Mexico. Um, used to before I go in the store, I, I let my dad, he come home. That time I was 16 years old. I was running a business with him the knowledge, the experience I got from him. Now I know that, but it's, it's. And he told when me When I go to a new state and I look at the way they're driving, I'm just like, oh shit, I gotta figure out how like to maneuver here. When I go to a different country, I'm like hopeless. I'm like, dude, I can't speak their language. I don't know which way to go. How do you manage to conquer with confidence? This is, this is my overall question. I know you came to this country not knowing how to maneuver around it. And I see people that speak the language that are here that are lazy as fuck. They don't want to get up and work. They don't want to get to the opportunity. But you guys are like, no, no, no. We don't know anything. But at the end of the day, we're going to figure this shit out and run it. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, I'm trying to figure out what inspires you guys to push through the obstacles. Because I watch people every day look at an obstacle and get overwhelmed. And in my mind, I go, dude, my dad saw that same obstacle, but didn't even know how to fucking speak the language and still got it done. What was the fire that you guys had to like push through? And like that day that you would put your head on the pillow and you're like, damn, I don't feel like I'm doing anything. Like what motivated you to just keep going? Like what was there like, like a, yeah, a, a vision, have, a plan? Like what was it? One thing about it, you have to enjoy anything you do. 
if you don't enjoy, is going to be failure. Okay? For example, when I go to work, I enjoy it. I have fun. I come back around 4 o'clock, and uh, if I don't have nothing, I'm spending time with my friends, like a Friday, Saturday, believe it or not. We drink, we have fun until 4 o'clock in the morning in Chicago. After that, I came back two hours. I go to sleep, I get up, I'm going to work. It's fresh. When you are young, you could conquer. You could do anything you want. If you are lazy, that's it. You can do nothing. If somebody give you a million dollars, you're going to lose it in three days. If you work hard, you conquer it, you could do anything you want to do. You'd be very successful. That was such a beautiful monologue, and then you ended it like bow rap. <laughs> <laughs> that was so funny, dude. It was a beautiful, it was like anything you do. And Great I, success. I want to answer one of those questions when you said how you go to different countries and you feel lost. Being, again, with our fathers and, and, and coming here with our parents, don't forget there was other people here. They had friends. They had acquaintances. They had ah, people. so a community. So we had a community that if my father had a question about a tax, hey, who does your taxes? So and so. You were looking out for each other. Hundred percent. That's 100%. great. Hundred um, percent. Church. You would meet Assyrian people you've never known, never met, but you get to know them. This one is an attorney. He's an accountant. He's a doctor. He's an whatever. So this is how we we got to know and that's how we helped each other so newcomers then we would would come to us in mm -hmm. high school when i went to school the teacher would say to me caroline there's a couple of new assyrian students would you mind coming with me to the office we need your help in six months i was translating to other assyrians wow. literally in six months wow. so with that being said that's how it became mm. and before you know it you get to know the country, you get to know. And don't forget, America is a melting pot. Everybody was mm -hmm. a newcomer from somewhere. So nobody knew at all. Speaking of new, to parlay this conversation, mm -hmm. uh, Belle is actually transitioning into a new version of social media. She's like reinventing herself. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, uh, what is it called? What's the style? Uh, Use your mic. I believe it's called um, PC. Right? NPC? NPC, right. It's you called really got to learn it if you're going to do I it. I know. I, I keep forgetting the name. But I'm actually really excited about this. What People is that, that about? do this make like $7,000 yeah. in 10 minutes, 15 minutes. What is it? Do you have uh, an example by any chance? Here, pull up. Tina has an example. Yeah. Let me just. I really looked into it and I just, I don't know. There's just something about it. I just think it would be really fun. And so. Um, we want well, your opinion also, on it. Also, yeah. you're, you're an esteemed actress. Very esteemed acted on some great shows you like Thank really you, know babe. what you're doing so this seems very very up your alley yeah um yeah it's like creating a character you're a character yeah, you guys and, watch and basically it. they tell you what to say and you say it so the audience gives you the lines mm -hmm. mm. oh. yeah here so oh. there's the video it's <laughs> mom watch so good. Gang, gang. Oh, please. Take your time digesting. Take your time. You don't, you don't like it? Do this? <laughs> what the hell is this? <laughs> you don't like it? But she's an actress. Guys, just enjoy the content. I, probably, I'm, I, I think I could be really good at it. But what would you, would you, what would be your, like, okay, give me an example. What would you do? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> She's actually been practicing. I'm yes. really proud of her. Hold this, this. Hold this for me. Got you, got you, babe. Hold this for me. Okay. I've practiced, so. Ready? <clears throat> gang, gang. Gang, gang. Mmm. 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 Gang, gang. Gang, gang. Ice cream, so good. Ice cream, so good. Mmm. Mmm. Wow, you fell my heart. <laughs> Actually, that was, joke aside, that was good. Yeah. Yeah. That was good. Thank you. So, Actually, that was good. She's starting next, next week. And uh, yeah, just for like three hours, she's going to sit there and do that. That is really cute, actually. I mean, as long as you keep it 
cute and respectful. Why the hell not? There is not? some not respectful ones. Is there, there oh, really? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna say my piece right now. Go, is please. it gonna be something unrespectful? It's not accepted. This is the ice cream. So good. Ice like, cream. I, I, so yeah, good. That's, that's disgusting. Ice, ice cream. So good. <laughs> it's good words. <laughs> okay, bro. No she's fucking not doing chance. Stop no she's way. No, I would not. Do that. I know I'm won't. proud of you. I know, I know you won't. I know she won't. <laughs> well, we'll just see where the you views so, on the podcast are. Yeah, you're trying to be so like, you're like, like looking at me like in my eyes like, Belle. Yeah. Like, yeah. Mm, that's, mm. it's really cute. <laughs> yeah. No, no. That bang bang, whatever, that was cute. But that <laughs> bang, bang bang, that was so cute. But Belle, I'm, you did crush it. Did you, Unironically, yeah, like you I did practiced it in the mirror, but I was like, okay, I have to crush this for the podcast. I was like, I yeah. practiced it in the mirror. No, no, I mean, you did a good job doing it. But then, yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. a it's a viral thing that's yeah, going on. Like, yeah. a lot of people enjoy it. But yeah, you know what it. else is going viral? Mm. Your husband. What are you doing now? I would yeah. stay clear from restaurants for a bit, buddy. Just why? Because that no no mashed potatoes bit. Hold this for me. Oh, the, in uh, Greece? Why does this upset the people so much? <laughs> because they're they're saying. Talk to them. First of all, they're saying that you got spit, which I've been well, telling you guys. First of all, oh, there is nothing wrong with saying I prefer French fries. We didn't fight. We didn't argue. Mom, well, you're screaming in the mic. You're uh, blasting You're the my one ears. who said. Who talk said loud what? so I can hear you. I said talking to the mic, not screaming to the mic. Anyway, moving on. The point is, I asked. We <laughs> asked. We said, can we have French fries instead? And they said, no, we can't do that. Okay. They should have said, but then we said, can we order fries? I don't think you remember that. He was like this. Babe, hold oh, the mic no, for me. He, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he got sick of hearing the same thing over and over. No mashed potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> no mashed potatoes. No mashed potatoes. Yeah. The girls, is certain, no. No mashed potatoes. That's dude, true. Dude. <laughs> dude. <laughs> no, what no, a gangster. No mashed I, potatoes. On my they, plate. <laughs> you know what? They want to push my potatoes on my plate. I don't want it. Hey, to, I defend want my mom, to defend my mom and dad, they didn't, even, they didn't even bring, bring it on the plate. They had a, it had a separate container. Yeah, so and they should have said. And here's it's my thing. high class place. No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. Uh, I did it. We didn't no, say. No, I don't want it I don't on my like steak. To throw things I want away. The fries. They're both sitting up. No, no, no. We didn't want them. Uh, don't bring me something that is going to go in the trash because to me that's food. That's yeah. a sin. Don't do that. I'm not going to eat it. Don't bring it. <laughs> okay, I go to restaurants here when they want to bring bread. I said, please don't bring bread because I know once you put it in front of me, you're going to have to throw it away. I hope they do. But you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So please don't bring pita. Please don't bring bread. Don't bring. You I don't want it. it. I don't want to waste yeah. it. So my point was, don't bring me mashed potato. But may I please have French fries? <laughs> I'll pay for the damn French fries. You know, just give it. To and they did. They brought us a whole plate of French fries. And then the joke was, mashed potato was on a separate plate. Period. Um, Can we move on from that stupid people, I got you. I'll, I'll thing? parlay right now. My father comes back from Greece. No. And he's like, <laughs> ugh, my legs. <laughs> he goes, oh, no, there's something wrong with my legs. And then my mom is massaging his inside of his legs. And it gets really bad. And he's like, His thighs Caro, was hurting, yeah. Caro, I think I got a blood clot. <laughs> It was that bad. He was like, I can't walk. The poor guy couldn't get out of bed. He couldn't walk. Come on, every day. Oh, hot shower. Please rub it with this machine and put a painkiller on and so on. I said, in my head, I'm thinking, oh, my God, what if he has blood clot? You know, 25, 25 hours of sitting between the airport and the plane. It's oh, a lot. Yeah. So he went to a chiropractor. He's like, yeah, you're just sore. And then I said, make an appointment with your doctor. So he makes an appointment with doctor. This is doctor. He goes and sees him. The doctor says, I need you to go get... Um, MRI. MRI, was it? Yeah. And to make sure that you don't have blood clots. So I thought it, but I never said it to him because I didn't want him to worry. Yeah. So go ahead. Was okay. Everything was okay. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Hey, dude, this dude went to doctors, <laughs> chiropractors. Yeah, yeah, I swear. Yeah. All because he was sore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He yeah. was sore. Every day. Well, don't God. skip legs day, bro. You were sore. Leg day. Legs day. Okay. Leg, leg day. Leg, leg. But he has leg. two legs. This is not the first time that Georgia has called it legs day. Is it not legs day? <laughs> you no. you have. Hey, hey, hey I need hey, some show the pamper. world. Show the world your new tattoo. Let's go. Can I put my phone on your? Now, if you yeah, see if you see my mother's face, she's very disappointed. Is that Jesus of cross on your leg? Yeah, it's not that. That's horrible. <laughs> Mom, mom, as a nice Christian woman. No, 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 no. Listen, no, no. as can a nice. I, can, call, I, can I hold on? One, one second. Let me set the tone. This is going to be a nice, clean debate. 
but as a nice Christian woman, judge, go. No, I'm not. Okay, no. Um, <laughs> okay, wait, tell okay me let me tell explain me, you. Tell me go, why. Go because fight, a debate. cross yeah. and Jesus that we worship, yeah. if it has to be anywhere, it should be next to your heart. Not I, by your I already feet. have Not, my Illuminati uh, right there. Oh, so you have Illuminati on yeah. your chest and... Yeah. And Jesus I'll on never it. Accept and this son is managing. This this man is managing your son. Mom, mm. I remember when you first met David. You said, "Oh my God, he's so sweet. I love him. He's always welcome here to stay." Now, how are your feelings? He can leave his leg outside. Damn. <laughs> and then it would be leg day. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, but but no. <laughs> but seriously, no, no. All joke aside, no, David, no, I will never I like you, or accept that. I brought but you. I brought, <laughs> why would you? <laughs> That permanent no. thing out of your leg, I will <laughs> never accept it. But why You're would disgusting. you choose, seriously, but why would you choose? Not, why not your back or why not your chest? I have a lot of tattoos and, you know, I just, and now I can see Jesus. If it was on my back, I couldn't see it. Do you believe in Jesus? Absolutely. So, you're Christian? Yes. Then why would you? Well, because I, I, now when I wake up, I, I can see it and it, it's like a reminder so to me. So you wouldn't have seen him on your arm? No, I don't have space. There's no, I have too many tattoos. In my defense, he got a cross over there. there. I do have a cross. He has a cross right here. Yeah, he got a cross. Yeah, listen to me. Well, you prove you. I'm going to see my flowers Can I be honest, though? He likes to step forward with the Lord, so he puts it on his He moves forward with the Lord. That's also, I need. Not I need. Joking, I need. I, I, not no. joking, I need Jesus' right. touch on my calves because my calves are looking a little small. You know. Yeah, so no, so see, like, to me, you're gonna to lose me, that leg, bro. I swear, it's gonna be like a weird as thing. A I'm gonna wake up tomorrow. God forbid. God forbid. And when I when I go to church and I kneel in front of a cross, the cross is always on, on higher, higher than I am. Never, mm. never at my never. lower than me. I had a client. She had a rosary on yeah. her ankle. I. She was a new client, and. Um, Make it closer. I was doing highlights on her, and I dropped a comb, <laughs> and when I bent down to see that, and I said, wow, you have a rosary tattooed on your ankle, and it came like that on the cross, on the, that I was disgusted. I feel like you want to chop my leg off right now. Well, God forbid, but I would re erase it if I were you. If only that was possible. He just got it. I literally just I got it two days ago. Two days ago. <laughs> so, like, so, it's such it a dark detail, detail, It's peeling. Like, it's full so tattoo. tattoo. Then I hope to oh God it God. gets peeled completely on its own so you're not in pain when you're removing it. Um, I would, How would your mother if feel you, if she If you find the, re the removal, I will remove. Start erasing. All right, let's go. Oh, listen. <laughs> I, no, I, no, you, dude, you just got this no. done. You know, fund the removal, I will. Okay, deal. In a heartbeat. Deal, mom. And it's America been a pleasure doing business with you. In America is the witness. <laughs> Her Davidja's tattoo he got two days ago. Um, I got my bat on the other leg. Yeah, you, do you new? like the bat? That's nice. Can I, like I ask you something, you everyone with tattoos? Now I'm including yeah. my children. Yeah. What do you have against your bodies? I love my body. Then why the hell do you cover it? My body is my canvas, so I can put whatever I but want. But God created that canvas, and if you wanted a tattoo, he would have done it. Do you Answer have, do you have piercings? Ears. I was okay, three so years if, old, if I God no wanted you to have piercings, wouldn't God have just... Get her, Davidge. Get her, Davidge. No. no, I'll honestly, I believe, and um, I will, um, no. Fair <laughs> enough. Mm -mm. You heard it here. I have zero. I'm proud of you. Thank you. Oh, my God, that was so funny. <laughs> I'm going to cover that for the rest of the interview. <laughs> <laughs> Why, Harry? It's printed in here. <laughs> The cool. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, um, oh. Dave Portnoy does this thing where he goes and he rates pizzas. Asshole. And, Who is he? Okay. He's, an, he's an asshole. Dave Portnoy, you are an asshole, brother. Whoa, whoa, whoa. 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 Wait, 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 what are we talking buddy, about, guys? Buddy. Buddy. Whoa, whoa. Hold on. Who are we whoa, talking hold about? Hold on. Hold on. Pizza. One second. Pizza, pizza. So, Dave, uh, Dave Portnoy, what he does is he goes and tastes pizzas and he rates it. He does it for every type of pizza place, right? And he has, like, even an app where he tells people, hey, like, this is a really good pizza. You should go. Mm -hmm. And it's helped a lot of uh, mom and pop's places. But, unfortunately, if your pizza's bad, he's going he's gonna to rate it bad. Um, and one of the people that he rated bad got into it in a video. Mm -hmm. And now, Davidj is passionate and he doesn't like it. Davidj, go speak your truth and then you guys can chime in on what you guys are going on. Okay. Even Tommy's upset. I'm upset because... I've started a small business. I, I started my business from scratch. Same mm -hmm. with my, my father, right? Like we've come from nothing. And when you build something from scratch and it takes you years and years of hard work, like it's not easy to open up your own pizza Obviously. spot, right? And so yeah. when you That's true. when you're a privileged asshole, Dave Portnoy, and, you go, and you go stand outside someone's uh, pizza spot 
You know, like, this place fucking sucks. Don't come here. And he you didn't say that. He didn't say that. Well, basically he did. Well, he did it, so he can't put words in his mouth, but right? But what did he say? He just rated it. A and bad pizza. Bad. And then the guy started yelling. He came out. He goes, get out of here. And then he goes, he goes, let me make something clear. Get out of here. And then Dave goes, let me make something clear. Fuck you. <laughs> it was funny. But I just, I look, I have a, I have, there's a sensitive place in my heart for people that own small businesses. And I just think if you have a platform, you should use it for good. Fun and thing. I get that he's raised, he's raised $50 million or whatever. But like that poor man, you know, I just feel bad. So for here's him. my opinion. Can about I, that. can I share mine real quick before I get smoked for his opinion? Here's yeah. my thing. My dad opened up his restaurants you know like he i saw how hard it was but at the end of the day anybody has the ability to go into my father's store and give them their honest opinion Mm -hmm. how that man came out with so much anger there was a lot of passion he was telling him like beat and shit like that he asked for the smoke in my defense like in my defense because if my father came out be like hey get the fuck out of here and that guy started swearing at my dad like dad you started the 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 issue i disagree now, listen, in the video, he says it's not a good pizza, okay? Mm-hmm. Now, does that do better? Do your pizza better? If your pizza is not good, he's not, like, coming after this guy saying, oh, it's because it's his pizza that it sucks. He's supplying a product, and he's, he's reviewing it. Exactly. He's giving, so yeah. the, the mature thing to do is if, if you see somebody recording out there, right, I think if, my, if it was my father, and he's like, what do we do? Do we go outside and swear at Dave? I would say no. Approach him. And talk to him like business. Come out to him and be like, hey, today you didn't like it. Do me a favor. This is a family-owned business. You know, this is all I got right now. Let me try better. Let me do better. Let me even impress you. Give me a week. Let me get some stuff going. And I, instead of coming out being like, fuck out of here. Do all this shit. It's how you're behaving. If you're acting as an animal, you're going to get treated like an animal. If you come out. And I get it. I get his point of view because he's passionate, right? It's his own business. And maybe he's uh, providing food for his children. And also, to side even more, Divish, the people passing that were like locals, they were saying, no, 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 I like this spot. Mm. So even that alone would have got me to go eat there. Just the people passing, I, it was the guy's attitude that made me being like, oh, I don't want to go to but, that. But hold on a second. Hold on a second. First of all, not a good pizza. It's one man's opinion at this point. Why would you impose your opinion for the world? That's his thing. That's his. He gets paid to do that. Okay. But then... If he really, what, what I would have done, privately speaks to him and say this. Don't go put it out there. No, that's with, his thing. He, 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 he rates pizzas. That's his job. Okay, then that's not fair for the man that worked his ass out all his life to run a business and takes one human being to destroy it. You are in a business. You're going to get reviews. If you have a shit store, people are going to say it's shit. Uh, luckily, you're very talented at what I you're doing. I praise the Lord. But is his pizza that bad? It did look pretty shitty. I'm not going to lie. Look, it didn't yeah, look great. Looked, looked Excuse me bad. one second. But why the hell are you so upset? I actually changed my opinion. I, 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 <laughs> to be honest with you, I think... Sorry, Dave. I, I didn't mean to insult you. That guy so, did I got a, you, Dave. Does he really have the bad taste to change... To, to, to judge food, though? People, well, no, no, no. People respect his opinion on pizza. And by the way, it's really good. He it's has a, a reputation. He, 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 he has somebody great, who knows what they're talking about. He is... He has worked himself to garner a reputation and garner an audience of people that respect him for what he thinks about things. He's not just somebody that's going out there. If he was going out there and before he went to the pizza shop, he said, what's going to be the most entertaining thing for me to say? Also, He doesn't do that. Also, just to, again, defend Dave, when uh, COVID happened, mm-hmm. he was the one in the streets fighting for mom and pop stores. So it wasn't like he's just a bunch of rich dudes sitting around being like, fuck the poor people. Like, he was out there taking care of these people. There was a lot of people that had businesses that wouldn't have lasted through COVID, and he took care of them through him tasting pizza and celebrating. So it's like, yeah, maybe this one dude or two dudes or three dudes got the smoke, and now people don't want to eat their pizza. But again, it's like even my own father, if I look at my own father, I'd be like, listen, you opened up a pizza place. Have pride in your pizza. Make sure it's good. So that way when a Dave Portnoy walks in, your pizza's good. If you had that one day that was bad and you're serving bad pizza, shame on you. Why are you charging people for bad pizza? Mm-hmm. I agree. And so now this, um, this incident, but. when the owner came out and yelled, was this video posted? Yeah. Like there was a video of the owner? Okay. So, okay, so this is what I think on this would would be that um, 
obviously yeah you have a business you you have to compete with other people that's part of the job you're meant to compete other others so you want to stand out you want to be the best and also too as consumers we want to know like i don't want to go to somebody who is bad at you know cutting hair so that's why i want other people's opinions that way i don't go and i get messed up right i want to go find the best pizza i don't want to waste my money it's your money yeah Yeah. customers they want that they look for that bro i wish the camera was on him could you just come sit right here Come on. Come on, Kabe. Come on, Kabe. 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 So Kabe is like an aggressive Persian driver. He's the type of dude that busts through the... And it's like... And instead of... He'll look at you and go... Like that. As he's like... Turning. And he drives like an animal. Come on. Pull out your chain. Show him the chain, bro. You have to show the whole vibe. Anyways. So... <laughs> so he's uh, he's dry, dude. I used to always be like, dude, my mom doesn't want me driving with you, bro. And he goes, I Why? still don't. <laughs> what do you mean, <laughs> my mom? This dude still don't. would not mm-hmm. only drive a hundred miles an hour in school zones, speed bombs, all this stuff. One day, he calls me and he goes, dude. Um, recently, I'm in Vegas. He goes, dude. Uh, I got a problem. I go, what happened? He goes, your, your parents might have seen me do something. <laughs> <laughs> and I go. What did you do? And he goes, I may have got on, may have gotten into it with somebody because of driving. And I was like, what? And I'm getting a call from my mom now. Like, oh, dude, uh-huh. hold on. So I call and I merge them. And she goes, oh, look who it is. <laughs> do you tell yeah. your point of view. And then yeah. you tell your point of view. So we're coming, uh, it was on 44th Street. We're coming out of Costco. And I drive and I would, he's driving and I'm next to him. And I see this guy with dogs and he's like, oh. Cussing and screaming. I'm like, oh, I don't know what ha- I wonder what happened to this guy. And then I see Kave. I'm like, oh my God, I know what happened to this one. And here is Kave. And he's, I'm like, oh my God, he's turning around. So I'm calling him, like, I'm calling his number to don't, do not do this, do not do this. And then uh, this one, he U turns, and who does he see? His face. And I go like this, and he goes, and he flips off the curb. <laughs> then he U-turns again, and now he's turning to go back. So we're like, and I call him. I'm like, what were you thinking? He goes, no, no. No, he no. Was he was cussing. He turned around. I saw, oh, he's going to fight. I parked my car to protect him. I said, yeah, make sure. He and my he's dad okay. almost hop into a fight. <laughs> yeah. By again, the way, that's my I father. Parked. Fight? All oh, right, I fight with him. <laughs> no. I fight with him. I, I, I parked my car. Again, I said, no, he didn't stop. He kept going. I said, okay, Carol, don't worry about it. Don't scream. He's okay. The only, every he time. He only left because he saw you guys. Yeah, yeah. I know that. Because I know his face had changed when he saw me. <laughs> the funny part is, every time, like, something happened and I'll FaceTime him, or I swear he looks at me, he doesn't say hello. He just laughs. I know, like, okay, I, know it's, I know something's it's happened. A, his sister is my client. She's in my chair, and she goes, hey, um... <laughs> Kave was in a car accident. Oh my I'm like, god, bro. What? Is he okay? She says, Yeah, um, he kind of. I'm trying to remember, was it? Yeah, yeah. He was trying, he was driving on Bell and he decided to go between two cars. I'm like, Two cars where? Bell is only two lanes. One, two. Yeah, between two. I'm like, And what happened? Well, he landed over the fence in somebody's airport. 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 Bro, the air, dude, he, he sent me a airport. picture of it. Yeah. Bro, Scott's how did you airport. live? So I got really angry at this point. I said, you know what? I said, FaceTime him. I said, no, 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 I'll FaceTime him. <laughs> so I stopped <laughs> working on her hair and I FaceTime. I swear to God, he, this is how Kaveh, he answers the phone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, do you even, why are you laughing right now? Are you okay? He says, yeah, I'm like, good, because I will kill you <laughs> when I see you. And by the way, I text him, like, if you ever sit in the car with this guy, I will kill you too. And he still goes, I'm the best driver. I, I am the best driver, 100%. He is a good driver. I'm yeah. a very good driver. I just try things. I know. But <laughs> not when there's people around. Scott's at airport. But it's more fun when there's more people around. Dude, what was that Persian song you would play? By the way, so it, it, imagine that 70s show, right? All the friends, that one guy that has a car, our guy was a Persian that we give, he, be, he speaks like. <laughs> barely spoke English. Bar- barely spoke He's Your like, fez. He, go, he literally that comes was. and he goes, come on, guys, I got the car. And then we're like, <laughs> we're like, okay. And then, dude, you would think he would try to like fit in with us and like play our music. This guy goes, you're going to love this one. This is, <laughs> this is Zon Yor. It's like, duh, duh, 
dun, dun, dun. And he's like, dude, he played it so much, I could sing every word yeah. to this song now. And I got excited about it. I go, play senor, play senor. <laughs> Well, you got to tell them when when Kaveh moved to uh, United States, because it was later, you know what I mean? You have to fill people in. Oh, okay, so Kaveh. I'm an immigrant. <laughs> Kaveh, I'm, I'm just surrounded by immigrants. My girlfriend's an immigrant. You're an immigrant. You look like an immigrant. You, look, you look like you hunting immigrants. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so you need a moisturizer. I'm so ashy. <laughs> Dry ass bitch. Uh, so where I'm in class and I hear, um, literally just, poof, and I turn around and he's standing <laughs> over the skinny kid, yelling at him in okay, Persian. Why are you bro. saying skinny kid? I was skinny as well. Well, the kid that I, dude, all I saw was your giant ass back. What grade just, is this? This is freshman, freshman year. year freshman year. Pro, could you talk about that or no? The kid stole my wallet. It's a little wallet. <laughs> wallet <laughs> my wallet or my watch. I always had this big ass gold watch on my wrist. Very Persian of me. And he took it. He ran around the quick class. I smacked him in the back of the head. I told him not to do it again in my broken English. And um, <laughs> don't do that again. Basically. <laughs> and I was talking to somebody, and then he just smacks me in the face with this physics book. Just with the edge of the book. Oh. So I just got up and started wailing on his Bro, head. Bro, wailing Oh, my on God. It. Like, I didn't... He was just saying the most craziest shit in his language, and he was passionate about it. And then you know what the best part is? He only said one English word after that. When he was done, he's like, good. And he just, like, walked out. <laughs> and the teacher's like, the teacher's like, get out of the class. He goes, I am already leaving. <laughs> <laughs> but wait, wait, wait. How did you know? Did he really have your wallet yeah, in your watch? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. so he confessed to it? No, I saw him take it. I bet he'll never steal again. <laughs> um, he went to jail. He came out no. full body tattoos. And then he got expelled for a knife. But he came up to me after he came out from jail and he shook my hand. No, no way. way. When? Sophomore year. Huh? Oh, oh, so he oh, went thought, to jail no, while you guys were... I thought he was going to be like 30. Oh. No, 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 no. He went Holy to juvie. Time. Yeah, he went to juvie. I, I got, I'm going to tell them a uh, Batman story. Sure. Batman. <laughs> this is so, it's so hot here. Are you nervous? I'm not nervous. It's just very hot with the lights. No, Can with we, the lights. Well, the lights. Now it's yeah. cooler. Yeah. Now, now cooler. It, got, it was very hot for me. Kave, so. Kave and I have rarely got into like like real fights. Like just like arguing and yelling at each other. We're, we pretty much know each other. And when I mean know each other, we know where the line is. And we're like, avoid it. Right? But Definitely. one day, I'm just, I'm not having it. I'm like, today, I'm stepping up. If he steps up, I'm stepping up. And I'm, I'm just, I'm here to have a good time. It's the Batman premiere. Okay? Where it Which harkens. Batman? This is... The Christopher Nolan Batman? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, the, nice. the Batman. Dark, Dark Knight? Oh, fuck. Dude, dude. Oh, this is a big night, bro. Harkins 101. This is a big night. There's people waiting in line for hours back in the day before social media. People were dressed. This is an event. This is like, this is the night that we would every, hey, next weekend, Thursday, 12 o'clock. Don't forget. We're all ready. And sometimes when you're excited about something, you can't, there's too, too much pressure there to make it like perfect, right? It's like kind of like a wedding night. You want everything like, to go. Yeah, you're losing your virginity. Yes, or right? Yeah. It's like, dude, everything got to go perfectly. <laughs> Um, Sorry, guys. We're in, uh, we're in the seats. Think of what we're sitting right here, but reverse. So I'm here, he's here. And then our friend Martin is right here. And this guy is just into the shenanigans, man. And I'm just, I'm more like shenanigans with our friends. He's shenanigans. I want everybody to see. That's the type of shenanigan. He, he's like, he, listen, I didn't understand what confidence was until I met a real Persian man. That's confidence. That's like the real <laughs> confidence, right? And so I'm sitting there and they come out with a microphone and like, hey guys, before we get this movie started, let's have some fun. And everybody's like, yeah. He's like, go ahead. And then so like- I know they, how to speak English at that point. No, he didn't. Not in my head. <laughs> go ahead. And the poor guy, he did speak English. Anyway, so he goes, uh, the, the, there's one question. This is where I, had, I fed up with it, bro. They're like, who plays Bruce Wayne? And he goes, Batman! <laughs> and she goes, no, like an idiot. Like, she obviously knows that this guy's trolling her. She goes, no, like, the actor. She asks again. He gets up, Batman! <laughs> and I'm like, bro, shut up. And he's like, no, no, you shut up. And he's like sitting there, oh. and he goes, again, he goes, who plays Batman, he goes, Bruce Wayne, and he's just like going, he's answering the questions wrong, and I go, bro, enough, he goes, you enough, and he just like goes in again, and I'm like, yo, Kave, I fucking mean it, stop, and he turns to me, goes, or fucking what? This is a packed <laughs> theater too, right, just bro, for context, bro, like how many people are in this theater? Five, six hundred people, like we were in the huge IMAX one, it's packed, 
like far, bro. It's far. And he looks at me, goes, what the fuck are you going to do about it? And today I wanted the smoke. So I go, bro, I will fuck you up, dude. Shut up. He goes, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking make me. And then the girl asks a question and while looking at me, he goes, Batman! And I go, bro, I mean it, bro. I fucking mean it. Shut the fuck up. And so now we're yelling at each this other, bro. This must have been the funniest bro, shit yelling the at me. to watch. All I remember last, he goes, do it! Fucking do it! I go, shut the fuck up. Our friend melted in his seat like this. He's like, there's no fucking way. So then I go like this to turn to Martin, like, bro, you're gonna fucking help me out with this. And I see he's tucked in, and I go, oh my God. And I look, and I swear to God, everybody... <laughs> Oh my God. Everybody in the fucking th the girl hi holding the microphone. I'm not even kidding. I swear to God, like this. <laughs> we were yelling at each other for f like 15 seconds straight, bro. My heart is like, oh my God, they're gonna kick us out. This is the most embarrassing. Also, thing. what a horrible place to have a fight in, bro. This dude doesn't miss a beat. The girl goes, "Are you guys you're good now?" Because we're like quiet. I'm like, I'm not saying a word. Cave. Big watch, too big for his wrist, goes, carry on. Like that. I go, oh, my God. <laughs> the girl goes, oh, okay. And then she literally just goes back to asking questions. And he looks at me, and he goes, we're good, right? And I go, yeah, yeah, we're fucking good, bro. Like, we're fucking, we're, we might only have each other at this point. But like, we, uh, You're a psychopath. But a passionate one. That's my friend sense. you're talking about. Yeah, what the fuck? Number two, know your place. <laughs> This was a weird podcast. Yeah. This yeah. is a weird episode. A good oh, weird nice. or a bad weird? Because remember weird. one thing. I have fans. Shut they up. might not like it if you talk like that. Yeah, careful, bro. Careful, <laughs> careful bro. <laughs> Who's her fans? Fans, not friends. Oh. He said that. <laughs> hey, he said that, but he got so scared of the way he said it. He goes, oh. <laughs> 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 Have a good one. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye, guys.